I made a post on my Facebook page recently that said, let me peek at it, I predict that the Jagd Terrier, I don't know if I'm saying that right, if it's supposed to be Jagd Terrier in, in German, will be the new Malinois within two years. Now, I don't know about the time frame. Maybe it'll take five years, maybe it'll take seven years, but it very well could happen within the next two years because of the internet and the way that things, that ideas spread. Now, some of you may not even be familiar with the Jag Terrier. It is a hunting terrier and it is a very, very extreme breed. In fact, its reputation is as one of the most extreme breeds. Now, some of you, some of you thought I was saying that the Jag Terrier will replace the Malinois in a working capacity for police departments and for the military and for Schutzhund competitions. No, he, mis he kind of misread that. Uh, I don't, I can't imagine how anybody could uh, uh, make the assumption that that was the argument I was making, no. But what, what I am saying is that, you know, initially in the zeitgeist, in the 50s after the war, after World War II, people came home and the German Shepherd was the badass breed to get. Then around the late 60s to early 70s, it became the Doberman. Everybody had to have a Doberman, it didn't matter. The working dog community was using it. Those were different types of dogs, but eventually the breed became so popular and eventually the working dog community moved on to other breeds. In the 80s, it was the pit bull. The 80s, I guess 90s was the Rottweiler and some of the oddball breeds like the American Bulldog, Alpharetta Bulldog, some of the other stuff. Um, the past decade or so, it's been breeds like the Cane Corso and most recently, the Belgian Malinois. Um, and it, it hasn't really surprised me because you have a breed that is a truly badass breed and a, and a breed that is used by the most extreme individuals, Navy SEALs and SWAT teams and the military, the army, what, what, on and on. And so what happens is amongst the general public, they wanna be like those people and they wanna be high speed, low drag and so they get the same breed of dog. They adopt the same breed of dog that those people are using. And pretty soon what you see are Craigslist Malinois breeders, Craigslist Rottweiler breeders, Craigslist Doberman, etc. on and on. The breeds largely get ruined or they're bifurcated between strictly working dog lines and pet lines, but frequently you get people who kind of mix the two and the whole thing is a disaster. It's mostly a disaster because you get pet owners who have no business owning an extreme dog, now owning an extreme breed of dog. And what, I, what I'm seeing happening with the people that I contact to throughout the, the country is that the Jagged Terrier is the next on the list. So if you have experience with this breed or if you don't have experience with this breed, you might want to prepare yourself uh, and do some research into the breed because you're probably within the next few years going to start seeing more and more people call you who are ill-equipped to own these dogs and have no idea what they're doing. And so it would behoove you and it would behoove the industry to start putting together a plan for how to, how to deal with this because these dogs are the most extreme and they have a reputation of being the most extreme. And once that filters down to the you know, Jim Bob with his raised truck and his beer belly and he's got to have the best, baddest, most cool thing. Hey, I got this new hunting dog from Germany. It's got German papers, that type of thing. You end up with people who should not be owning these extreme breeds. So in that sense, that's what I meant with my post. The Jag Terrier will be the next Belgian Malinois within the next two years. Again, my time frame may be off. Maybe it takes five years, maybe it takes seven years. We can circle back later on to see if I was right or wrong, but I have a hunch. I've seen this play out over the past 30 years. Within the dog fancy, you see these patterns, you see these, these trends keep happening again and again and again. And it doesn't always repeat itself, but it kind of rhymes. Like they say about history, it doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. It's kind of the same thing with fads within the dog industry. Hey, hope this was useful. Uh, now, if you're still with me, 
But first, a word from our sponsor, this guy. You know, if you want to get 30 to 70% more leads from the same traffic that you're sending to your website, you should be using our done for you dog training business website. It's proven and tested to convert more traffic than pretty much anything else out there. Our client in South Florida went from one lead a week to five to seven leads per day, sending the same amount of traffic to his website. The best part is we do it pretty much all for you. You send us a picture, three testimonials, and a brief description of your services, and we take care of the rest. You can learn more by subscribing to the Dog Trainer Marketing Newsletter at dogtrainertoolbox.com. You'll be redirected to a page where you can read all about our done-for-you dog training business website. Now, back to our original programming.